wake up and the sun's going to come up and we're going to be in heaven and we'll be seeing the real sun, the sun of glory, Jesus Christ. It's good to see you all here tonight. It's good to be in God's house and uh, we ask you to pray for uh, like brother Yancey and his wife. They'll be traveling tomorrow. Make sure you pray for them. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we eat and Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you give us. We thank you for the services this morning. We thank you for the friends and the fellowship that we have here to just worship you and just give you praise. We pray for the hand, hands of glory, Lord. We ask you to bless them and to just continue to touch their ministry. We pray for your eternal broadcast, Lord, that you just, we ask you to bless the ones that's listening and watching over to them. We pray for the Facebook. We ask you to just touch them too. But, Lord, we pray for the ones that's on our prayer list. We ask you to anoint them and touch them, Lord. And you know the, way, the problems and sicknesses we have, Lord. We, Lord, we need you to answer them prayers because we know you will because we believe it. And we pray for Brianna Baldry's upcoming surgery. We pray for myself, Sheila Barker, Irene Bell, Jacoby Bradner, Brenda Bryan, Kelly Bryan, Earl and Barbara Clarkson, Jamie Cole, E.T. and Deborah Connor, Jean Connor, Kathy Crane, Radiation, Jack and Gail Dale, Scott and Scotty Dean, Linda Gail Doom, Joe and Joyce Herb, Mary and Emily Hamley, Monica Green, Faith Ann Hawley, April Henderson, Eugene Henderson, Janice Hodges, Wayne and Pam Hudson, Pastor and Sister, Sister Hussey, Marion Johnson, Eston Lewis, pray for him tonight, Lord. We ask you to touch him as he stands before us and preaches the word. We pray for Jerry Lewis, Shelby Martin, Angela Merriman, Gary McCollin, John and Linda Mitchell, Angela Moore Shoker, Toby Moore, J.T. Moorefield, Linda Moorefield, Keith Moorefield, Marjorie Morris, Nancy Newton, Angela Oates, Donna Owen, Christy Paint, Unspoken, Sherry Pomiski, Broken Ankle, Danny Ray Hoskin, Robert and Vicki Reed, James Richardson, Cindy Rutherford, Bill and Judy Snow, Eileen Tickle, Evelyn Wallington, Cancer, Nathan Wells, Cancer, Francis White, Connie Wiles, Kelly Wood, Harold Yancey, Patsy Mills, Brandon Eastwood, Bill Snow, he had an infection, he fell, but pray for him. Lord, we pray, Lord, that uh, you just touch him, they, they're on the way to the hospital with Bill, and Lord, we ask you to just watch over and go with Judy, Lord, and, and touch her and what she's going through. And pray for Donna Ahern, Gary Sammons, Mike and Diana Mill, Dale Wilson, Patty Murray, Tommy Cancer, a friend of Steve Rains' his son, George, Teresa Horbitt, Ralph and Cindy Carries in the hospital. We pray for Caleb, Lord. He's at the hospital now. We ask you to touch him. He's got 100% blockage in his left arm. We pray for Nova and DJ and Chelsea Martin. They're sick. Lord, each one's name that we mention here, we're lifting them up to you. We pray that, Lord, that you just 
touch them again, Lord. And you know their need. We pray for the choir. We pray for the special singer tonight. We pray for each visitor that's here tonight. We ask you to bless them. We ask you to pray, Lord, if one here is lost and don't know you as their personal Savior, we pray today be the day of their salvation. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <laughs>
be seated. All right, this time we're going to have our ushers make their way up to receive our Sunday morning offering. Uh, before they take the offering up, we've got a few announcements. If you got your bulletins from this morning, go ahead and get those out. We see that we'll be having homecoming. That will be coming up Sunday, June the 2nd at 1030. Uh, there will be dinner on the grounds following the service. Chicken and soft drinks provided. Please bring enough for your family plus one pastor size. Amen. We're going to eat good that day. Praise the Lord. All right. If you're not doing anything on May 28th, we want to encourage you guys to please come be with us as we'll be back on our uh, church land. We'll be having our prayer and blares. We're having our prayer meeting at May 28th at 6 p.m. And Brother Alan Carwell will be the special speaker. Next Sunday, we'll be having our Memorial Day service to honor those that gave it all for our country. That will be next Sunday at 11 a.m., so please be a part of that. <clears throat> we will be having uh, our TBC Big Top Spectacular, The Greatest Show. That is our VBS theme for this year. That will be Sunday, June 9th, 9th through the uh, 14th. It starts on Sunday this year. That will be every night at 630 uh, Monday through Friday, and there will be a uh, VBS meeting following service. All you have to do is, uh, once we dismiss in prayer tonight, everybody just come to the front. We're going to have the meeting in here tonight, okay? Uh, they will be having Bible study this Tuesday. They'll be in the book of First Peter. Uh, that will be at 1 o'clock, and it will be here before we know it, Camp Surrender. That will be July 7th through the 11th, and that will be for all middle school and high schoolers. So there's being much prayer and mark our calendars for everything that we got going on. Amen? Yeah. All right. This time, it's time for our offering. Let's remember that our white envelopes for our tithes and offering, brown envelopes are for our building fund. And if you don't have cash to check in-house and you'd like to give, uh, Brother Ken Griffin's in the back. He has a debit card, a credit card machine, if you'd like to give your tithes and offering that way as well. And also, if you're listening by way of Internet, we're so thankful to have you guys tuned in with us. And if you'd like to give at home, all you have to do is uh, one of two ways you can go. You can go to www.strengthfortheday.com, click on our secure link at the top, or you can give by way of mail. You can send it to P.O. Box 1004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. And at this time, I'm going to have my brother, Evan Lewis, come up, and he's going to bless the offering tonight. Out of your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this fun day. Giving us, Lord, thank you for me. Blessings. Thank you for allowing all of us to be here, Lord. Be with the ones that couldn't make it, bring them back to the next point in time. Uh, be with uh, the preacher as he travels, Lord. Keep him safe, Lord. Be with Essen as he gives his message tonight. Give him the right words to say and allow him to step on our feet as needed, Lord. And um, just bless this offering to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for giving back to the Lord tonight. Let's give our instrumentals a hand. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, we'll have Brother Alan Cardwell. He's going to come and be the uh, special singing for us tonight. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me, leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Hear my feet. 
feeble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim toward the setting of the sun, lead me safely to a land of rest, and if I crown of life have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power, hear my feeble plea. O Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. O blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Amen. That was good stuff right there. Amen. I tell you, it's fun. It's, it's great we can have fun in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. It's great. You know, there's nothing like being in God's house tonight. You know, and I, I just want to thank you guys for coming today. Even though you, you knew I was preaching tonight, you still showed up. So, <laughs> praise the Lord, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm also thankful for the pastor, even though he's not here. I'm so thankful for the opportunity just to be able to stand in his pulpit and be able to uh, preach to you guys tonight. It's an honor and privilege to me, and I don't hold it lightly. I promise you that. Uh, but there's one more person I need to thank tonight, and because without him, all of us would be hopeless. Amen? I'm so thankful that the Lord uh, of my life has given me the opportunity just to be able to uh, stand here tonight and just preach to you guys, and I'm so thankful for that opportunity. <clears throat> Uh, way of introduction to my message tonight, you know, growing up, uh, maybe you have felt the same way, you know, being a little kid, you know, watching cartoons and everything, you know, you began to develop superheroes, you know, you, you, just heroes and people that you want to be like, you know, remember growing up, you know, I thought, I want to be Batman, you know, <laughs> I want to be the Flash, but I was never fast, you know, definitely not fi- uh, fast now, amen, uh, but um, it was people that I looked up to, but they were they were just made up, made up superheroes, you know? So I got to thinking, you know, maybe I can be like other people in this world, you know? Uh, I started looking to some famous people, you know, and just wanted to, uh, really I wanted to be a, like a professional poker player, and that's who I wanted to be like, you know? And I looked up to uh, people that I thought were so awesome, but uh, just like everybody else, they were just phony, you know? They want the real deal. But I remember uh, about 10 years ago uh, when I came back to uh, this church, you know, and I surrendered myself to full-time ministry, there was one person that reached down and he changed my life for good. And after that day and after he, uh, he had to whoop me a couple times, I will say that, you know, but after that day I knew what my goal was. I knew what my heart wanted to chase and I knew who exactly I wanted to be like. My message that I want to preach to you guys tonight is, I want to be like Jesus. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for our many blessings, God. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your only Son, Jesus, down across for our sins. We're so thankful, Lord. Lord, I just thank you so much for every person that's here today, Lord. They've just filled my heart, and my heart is overflowing with joy, God, and I'm just so thankful. Lord, I just pray you just bless everybody here for their faithfulness. Lord, I just pray, pray that you just open their hearts, hearts and ears, God, and I just pray that you just pour uh, down blessings upon them, Lord, and just help them just to uh, hear your word tonight, Lord. And I just pray at this time you just remove me. I pray that you have full reign, Lord, and I just pray for the most important need of all, God, tonight. If someone here today is not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray the day be the day of their salvation. We love you and thank you for all you do. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I want to be like Jesus. How about you guys? Amen. I hope that's what we all strive to be like. But in order to be like Jesus, there's three steps that we have to uh, take in effect first, okay? First of all, you must be saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I tell you, 
When Jesus took away the old, he took, he took it away. He cast it as far as the east is to, to, from the west. And I'm so thankful for that tonight. The old things are gone away. They're passed away, and I have become new. I have become a new man in Christ. And the same thing happened to you when you were saved. You have been made new. And <clears throat> all things are, are very new. And that is the first step that you must take in order to be like Jesus. You've got to be saved. You've got to ask him to be the Lord of your life. Secondly, you've got to get out the way. Uh, just because you're saved doesn't make you perfect. You still have free will, and we're still going to sin. We still have a sinful nature. Even though he has broke the chains of sin, they no longer have a hold in our life. We still make mistakes. We are still humans. You know, the flesh longs to sin, but we have to kill the flesh daily. You know, for me to, to live as, as Christ, to die is gain. Amen? And that's what we need to do. We need to strive to do that. And we need to get out of the way. Well, how do we do that? Well, John chapter 3, verse 30 says, He must increase, but... I must decrease. That is a daily struggle that we have to fight. We have to continue to try to allow him to increase in our life. And we just need to basically just get out of the way. We need to start doing uh, heavenly things and for the heavenly purpose of doing those things. Uh, examples uh, are reading your Bible, you know, uh, praying, coming to church like you guys did tonight. That's an amazing job. Listening to gospel music. And there's many more other things that you can do to allow him to increase. And we need to strive to do that each and every single day of our lives. And which brings me to the third thing is that you got to train to get better. You know, I can think of somebody going to the gym. The first time you went to the gym, you couldn't lift those heavy weights, you know. But after time, after time, keep going back. Uh, reputation, keep doing those things. You keep praying. You keep, um, you keep reading your word. You're going to get better. You're going to learn how to put on more armor of God and being able just to uh, withstand the attacks from the enemy. And you need to train to get better. Uh, let's just take uh, Ken and Andrew Vickerman as an example. If we were to allow Ken to come up here and play the piano, I can promise you he would not do a great job like Angie does. Amen? <laughs> and let's just say the same thing for Angie. If she went back there to the computer... It, online, they're probably wondering what's going on here today, right? So it's nothing against them. They are where they need to be. They are where they were trained to be at. You know, they have taken time and they have put the effort in making their ministries their goal and taking full advantage of it. And that's exactly what we need to do as Christians as well. We need to train to get better and to be more like Jesus. You got to keep doing it, and you, I promise you, you will get better. And as a preacher, as he always says, you can't just give it a lick and a promise. You have to keep going. No matter what, keep going. Luke chapter 6, 40 says, The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. If we keep training, you will get better, and the better to get, the more you will be like Jesus. And there are many different ways that we can uh, take as an example to be more like Jesus. And tonight I have three characteristics of Jesus that I think if we apply to our lives and we try to make these our focus and our goal to be more like Jesus, I believe the end goal will be worth fighting for. <clears throat> I want to care like Jesus. Nobody ever cares for you like Jesus, amen? What a Savior, I tell you. Jesus cares about others. You know, Jesus cares about me and he, ca he cares about you. He cares about everybody in this room. He cares about everybody outside of these walls. And he is, he is always there, and he cares for everything that's going on in your life. Whatever you're going through, give it to him. 1 Peter chapter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. When you feel like you're lost, you feel like nobody cares, I can promise you there's a Savior who does. Jesus cares for you. He cares for everything that you're going through. I can promise you that. Um, in your Bible, I want to encourage you to circle that word all. I love that word. I love that word all. That means I can give him everything. I can give him the good. I can give him the bad. I can give him the ugly. And he's going to take care of me because he cares for me. And he can do the same for you tonight. Whatever you're going through, no matter how big, no matter how small that it seems to you, give it to Jesus and sit back and see what your God can do. Matthew chapter 11, 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let's be honest, folks. 
This world is tough, amen? It is so tough. It is so hard. You, you never know what you're going to face when you walk out these doors tonight, you know? But I can promise you there's a Savior who cares, and he'll be with you. He, he will give you peace that passes all understanding. He will give you that rest. And I just, I'm just so overwhelmed by that rest because about that peace because it's something I just I can't explain it I just know no matter what I'm going through every little thing every big thing is going to be okay because my savior cares for me and he cares for you he cares for others and Jesus also cares about the church I love I love church how about you guys y'all love church amen I love I love coming you know and I don't know if you guys are like me, but, you know, when, you, when you're sick or uh, something comes up or if you have, to, you have to work and miss, you have to miss a service, I kind of I feel weird, you know. I feel like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing, you know, because I want to come every time, uh, every chance that I can. I hope the doors are open and I can come and be there. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my, thank you, my brother. Amen. Amen. So I, I, love come, I love coming to church. You know, I love coming any time that I can. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I tried it when I had my knee surgery. Uh, it was on a Wednesday. And we showed up, and I believe we dropped off the kids. And I was, I was trying to get out the car, and Kendra said, you're not going. You know, I, I was trying to go, and she's like, no, you're not. You're not you got to go home and rest, you know. But it just didn't feel right to miss, you know. And, and that's something that Jesus cares about, you know. And that's, I believe that's what we need to care about, too. Uh, well, how much does Jesus care about the church? Well, let's find out in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. <clears throat> Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He died for it. He died for the church. Something that's as simple as church, that we think is so simple, he gave his life for it. He gave his life so that we can come together as believers and that we can come worship him. And I believe something that Jesus died for is worth something caring about. Amen? I believe that we need to care about church. I believe that we should uh, come to church every chance that we can. We should help out any chance that we can. Great example, VBS. VBS is coming up. You need to help out. You know, uh, I, want, I want everybody to stand up real quick. <clears throat> everybody stand up real quick. Don't worry, we ain't going to do no, uh, nothing crazy. I just want you to turn around, and I want you to uh, fill uh, the seat you were just sitting in. It's warm, amen? Yes. I want you guys to know that's not your uh, contribution to the kingdom of God. That is not your contribution to the kingdom of God. You can be seated. God wants you to go outside these walls, and he wants you to be his hands and feet. He wants you to go and lift his name up. So that his house may be filled. Amen? Amen? That's what we're called to do. And, and, and you say you love the church as you say you do. Let's do more about it. Let's do what Jesus will, will want us to do and care about the church as he will care for the church. And let's not be afraid to have church. Amen? Amen. I believe that we, we get so, you know, uh-oh, oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> I mean, let's not be afraid to just praise him, you know? He died for you, so you don't have to go to hell, amen? amen? He died so that we can have life and that we don't have to worry about anything and we can put all our care upon him. Let's have church. Let's start having church and just let him go and let God, amen? amen? Let's start that here tonight. And I believe that Timberlake, I believe that in your personal lives, we can see great and mighty things happen. Psalms chapter 104 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. That is his word. I believe his word from cover to cover. Amen. I believe that we need to do the things that God is calling us to do. So let's praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I tell you, I don't have to go to hell. He paid my sin debt. Praise God. You know, glory to God. Amen. It's great to praise his holy name. Amen. Woo, I tell you. And you know, and if God cares so much <clears throat> to give his life and wants his house to be filled with praises, I believe that we should care enough to do it. Amen? We should praise him for any, any reason, you know? Thank God I'm alive today. You know? Amen? Thank God that there won't chains on the door. Not everybody is as fortunate as us. We, they they got to hide and just, they got to, they, 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 can, they can't have church like we do. 
they got to go around and they have to go uh, be secretive about it because they could, in other countries, they could be killed just by saying the name of Jesus. And we're so free. We live in the greatest country on earth, and we take no advantage of it. But we need to make sure that we're taking a full advantage of every opportunity because it could be gone just like that, you know? We're just one generation away. We're just one generation away from it all falling. So we need to stand, amen? amen. We need to stand on the truths and on the word of God. <clears throat> and I'm so thankful that he cares about the church because um, if it wasn't for church, I, I, I probably would have never known who Jesus was. How about you? I got saved at church, amen? amen? I tell you, I'm so thankful that God cares about the church. And I'm so thankful tonight that Jesus cares about the lost. Aren't you glad he cares about the lost? Amen. amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he found me. Matthew chapter 18, verse 11 says, For the Son of Man has come to save that, that which was lost. Verse 12. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine, and go off into the mountains, and seek if that which is gone astray? I'm so thankful that he left to go find that one little lost sheep, because that sheep was me. Amen. Can we testify this night? Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I am so thankful that he will leave the 99 every time. Every time there's a lost sheep, he will go out. You know, you're never too far gone. You're never too far gone for God to reach down. No matter how deep you think, whatever pit of sin you think you're in, God's arms can reach that far. Amen. And we need to care for the lost just as Jesus cares for the lost. And we need to preach the gospel every chance that we can. <clears throat> So I want to live, I want to care like Jesus. I also want to surrender like Jesus. Surrendering being the same as obeying. I want to obey the same way that Jesus does. <clears throat> Jesus surrenders to the Father's will. Jesus shows the greatest example of surrendering to his Father's will in Luke chapter 22, verses 41 and 42. Those verses state, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I'm so thankful that he didn't give up on me. I'm so thankful he went through the toughest thing that he would have ever had to go through. The, the toughest and hardest thing that anybody would have had to go through. So much torture, so much pain, plucking out his beard, beating his back, all that pain so that we could have a way to heaven. Man, what a Savior, amen? amen. Man, I'm so, I'm so thankful that he surrendered to the Father's will. We need to follow his example and surrender to the Father's will as well. He would have to go through the hardest thing, and he would have to become sin who knew no sin. And for the first time ever in history, God the Father would have to turn his back on God the Son because he was full of our sin. While he was hanging on the cross, you know, he, was, it, it, he died for our sin. What a Savior, amen. Jesus surrenders to the Father's will, but he also surrenders his life. <clears throat> he freely gave it up for us. He didn't have to. While he was hanging on that cross, he could have called all the angels down. They would have came and took him off the cross. But no, that's not, that's not where the story ends, you know. That is not where it ends. He went through. He went through with the plan, the perfect plan. <clears throat> the plan of salvation. Mark chapter 15, verse 37 says, And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. He had to surrender his life. He had to give it up freely because no man could ever take away it. So he had to give it up. Nobody could have ever taken it. So he had to surrender his life. That is the ultimate sign of love. John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I'm so thankful he laid down his life for me. I'm so thankful I'm a friend of Jesus tonight. Amen? And I'm so glad, even before I was even a thought, even before I even graced this world, I was on his mind. And every single person in this room was on his mind. He made a way. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm so thankful that he went through and he surrendered his precious life. And... Jesus did that so that we could surrender our life for him. Not by dying, but by living. That is the type of surrendering that we have to do. 
If we truly believe that Jesus surrendered his life for us, we have to surrender our life for him and live for him. Mark chapter 8, verse 34b says, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And follow me. We have to deny ourselves. We have to give up who we are and become what he wants us to be. We have to take up his cross. We have to fulfill his will for our lives. Continuing in chapter 35 says, For whosoever will shall save his life shall lose it. So if we try to save our life, it's, it's going to get us nowhere in life. We have to surrender our will and f- fulfill his will, and we shall gain everything. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the Gospels, the same shall save it. Verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There's nothing in this world worth going to hell for. There is nothing in this world worth going to hell for. I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul. And I hope that you guys don't want to either. Because I've lived this world. I've tried, I've tried different ways. I've tried to find happiness. I've tried to find joy. i try to find all these things to relieve and just to, just to have fun, I guess you could say. But there's nothing greater than surrendering your life to Jesus. And to the lost, that might, you know, that might seem like, what? You mean you want to tell me you want to do work? You want to just give up all this free things that you get to do? You go, the world is yours. The world is yours. I'm telling you, there's it's no purpose in that. And ever since Jesus saved me, my life has purpose. Your life can have purpose too. All you have to do is surrender your life. Surrender your life to the Lord of lords and to the King of kings. And you will... I will promise you, you will never regret that decision. We should surrender our life, <clears throat> not just for ourselves, but also for fellow believers, you know? It's hard, it's hard to live this, uh, this life alone. <clears throat> like I've told you, you don't know what you're going to face when you walk out these doors, but you don't have to do it alone. I'm so thankful for faithful friends, amen? amen. Anybody got one? Amen. I tell you, I'm so thankful that I got faithful praying friends. Because when I was at my lowest, the Lord knew I needed somebody there with me, you know? He gave me a great, great friends, a great wife. A great, I got great, I'm blessed beyond measure. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's not because of me. I'm nothing special. Don't say amen, Ken. Uh, there's nothing special about me, but there's something special about my Savior. And, he, and he, it's because of him. But no matter what you're going through, you need to be there for your fellow believers because we know that there's an enemy. We know that there's an enemy, and we know how he attacks us. Don't think that you're the only one getting attacked tonight, amen? I'm telling you, I can promise you this right now. Satan is not happy with anybody showing up here tonight. He ain't going to have a red carpet when you go out there and say, oh, man, let me, I was church tonight, you know? No, once you leave here tonight, there's a big target on your back. You know why? Because now that you know that we, we I'm telling you, God's got great things for this church. I believe it, and I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, I believe it. So, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's going to be us once we leave here today. Don't think that you're the only ones. I'm going to be facing it too, but you don't have to do it alone. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Reach out and help your fellow brethren. Help the body of Christ. Because we're one body working for the same goal, and that's to uh, fill the kingdom of heaven, amen? The kingdom of God, amen? We're supposed to fulfill God's will, and we're all, we all need to reach out. And when you, can le- when you can lend a helping hand, do it. Don't be asked to, you know? The Bible says when someone asks you to go one mile, go twain, Amen? Go the extra mile for your fellow believers. Amen. I want to surrender like Jesus. And lastly tonight, I want to love like Jesus. Jesus loves sinners. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even while we were sinners. He knew we were going to fail. He knew we were going to fall short. But he loved us anyway. He loved us enough to die for our sins. No matter how big or little you think your sin may be, Jesus can forgive it. 
He can save you. There's nothing, your past is, is not too bad. It's not too dark. It's not. He can save you. He can save you right here where you're sitting tonight. And I want to tell that, I want to tell the whole entire world the best news ever. That Jesus can save you. John 3.16. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I'm so thankful that verse said whosoever. I'm a whosoever. How about you tonight? Amen. I'm so thankful it said whosoever. That means that I can be saved. That means that you can be saved. That means the whole entire world can be saved if they're willing to accept what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus, he, he loves all sinners. And I want, that's what we need to strive to do is to love all sinners as well so that we can tell them the truth of the word of God, that there is a way, that there is a truth, and that there is a life. We need to make sure that we are loving Sinners, just as Christ loves sinners. Someone loved us enough to tell us about Jesus. Amen? Amen. I'm so thankful that I can, I can pass that on to the next person, to the next person, and to the next person. <clears throat> and like I said, Jesus loves all sinners. Amen? Amen? That means he loves all persecutors as well. You know, we think, oh yeah, you know, a single mom, you know, she's, she's lost, you know. That's, Jesus saved her, you know. We try to be the ones that we can reach out and, you know, we, 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 we didn't get that one saved right there. No, that homeless man on the street, man, I don't, I, don't turn a blind eye to him either. Reach out, show the love of Christ to him and to the persecutors, the people that want to do us bad, the people that want to harm us even, you know. We need to show them the love of Jesus as well. People that wish bad upon us. Because I think that there was an example in the Bible as well, too. You know, Jesus was willing to forgive the ones that beat him. Willing to forgive the ones that plucked his beard out, that, that whooped him with the cat of nine tails. The ones that spat on him. The ones that put the thing over his face, the cloth over his face and said, prophesize this, Lord. Which one of us struck you? He was willing to forgive the, them. The ones that pierced his perfect hands, he was willing to forgive them as well. Every person that put him on that cross, the ones that were hollering, crucify him, crucify him, he was willing to forgive them as well. He will forgive everyone. And we should take his example in Luke chapter 23, verse 34a. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They're lost. They don't know. They don't know, what, they don't know the truth. It's our job to love them to the truth. Amen? We have to love them to the truth exactly as Jesus did. He could have done anything. He, could, he didn't have to be there, but he did. He wanted to. <laughs> what, a, what amazing love, you know? A God who will go through so much for so many wrongdoers as well. But truth be told, we've been the wrongdoers. Amen? If we're honest with ourselves, we have been the ones that spat in Jesus' face. We are the ones that hung him on the cross. He had to go through all that. So that we can all can be saved. So don't ever think that you're better than nobody. You know? It said the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Amen? Amen. The foot of the cross is so level. And we must show that same forgiveness to others as Christ showed forgiveness to them that hung him on the cross. <clears throat> and we need to show... There's going to be people that do, do bad things to you, you know? They're going to wish bad upon you and they're going to bring, bring your past up. They're going to bring things up but you love them anyway. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 21 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceable with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. First of all, two wrongs don't make a right. Just because somebody does this wrong, doesn't mean we got to get even. Because then we're both in the wrong. You know, we need to show forgiveness, show kindness of a Savior who loved us enough to die on the cross. The one who died to, to make sure that we could be free from the chains of sin. And 
you know, we, we don't need to be overcome with evil, but we need to overcome evil with good. And we need to lend a helping hand to those that, that wish bad upon us and just, it's just our enemies, you know. They want us bad, but we don't do that. We don't get even. We let God. We let God do his work, amen? Because that person, you know, I, I don't understand why they're treating me like this, you know. My thoughts, exactly. I don't understand why I have to go through some things. But God has a purpose because of it. Maybe you're going through the same exact thing, you know. Like, yes, I, I could, I could, I got this great, really good comeback. I can, I can get even with that person, you know. They made fun of me. They made fun of me because I'm a preacher. They made fun of me because I'm overweight. They made fun of all, all this, you know. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The reason that we should show kindness is because you may be the only Jesus that they ever see. You may be the only Bible that they will ever read. You need to make sure that you're walking the walk, and you need to make sure you're talking the talk. Don't, don't be conformed to this world. Yes, we are of this world. I mean, we're from this world, but we're not of this world, you know? We're the salt and lights of the earth, amen? I tell you, a city on a hill shall not be hid. Let your works, whew, let your works so shine before man so it can glorify your Father, which is in heaven, amen? amen. That's what we need to do. Not for our glory, not so that we can be seen and that we can be praised, no, but the finisher of your faith can be praised and glorified through all that you say and do. Amen? Amen. Woo, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says, If any man say, I love God, and hate of his brother, he is a liar. Sometimes the only people, sometimes the people that do us bad are not just lost people. Sometimes Christians, people who say that they believe Jesus is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, sometimes they hurt us. If any, if any man say, I love God and hate of his brother, he is a liar. For that he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? We want to <clears throat> we want to act like, you know, that these sinners or the lost people are the only ones that hurt us. But no, I've been hurt from other Christians as well, you know. People that I looked up to, people that I, that I trusted, they let me down. You know, they let me down and, you know, they, they talk bad about me behind my back. But it doesn't matter. I need to love them and forgive them for what they've done wrong. Because at the end of the day, I'm no better than they are. They're still a sinner and I'm still a sinner. And we're sinners saved by grace. We're sinners saved by grace. And we need to make sure no matter, no matter what, you know, we have to forgive and just let go and let God, you know. Sometimes you can love at a distance, amen. Just because they do you wrong doesn't mean you, you know, you don't have to get either. You don't have to be buddy buddy with them, but you can still love them from where they are. I'm so thankful for the people that done me wrong in my life. I'm so thankful for the short time that I had with them. I learned a lot, but they had to go their way and I had to go my way. And I want to stay on the straight and narrow. How about you guys? I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow no matter. What the world throws at me, whatever Satan throws at me, I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow because I know that on that straight and narrow, there's a purpose at the end. Amen. I, can't, I cannot wait. What a day. What a day when Jesus you shall see. Amen. And if someone does you wrong, just forgive them and show them the love of Jesus. <clears throat> My last and final point tonight is Jesus' love. Jesus' is love never ends. Hallelujah. It's never going to stop. That's something to be excited about right there. Psalms chapter 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth, endureth to all generation. Last time I checked, everlasting means never ending. It means that it's never going to stop. That mercy, that mercy that He offers is never going to stop. And once you accept Him, he is, your, he is the Savior of your, of your life forever and ever and ever. No man can ever pluck you out of his hand. Amen? <clears throat> but like I said, there's an enemy. And maybe you've been here and you've been, been full of doubt. You know, you just, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I used to think too, you know, when I mess, when I mess up, you know, it's like, Lord, I got to I gotta fix me. I got to fix me before I can start reading your word again. I got to fix me so that I could... Uh, be used of you, you know? Satan, he uses many lies. And his biggest lies is that, that God's love can stop for you, you know? Can you imagine? Let's just, let's just go back. 
to why Jesus was carrying the cross, why he was going to uh, Calvary, when he was on, the, on him that road. Can you imagine just Jesus, just, he's walking, he's taking the cross, and next thing you know, he throws it off his back, and it falls and hits the ground. And he says, you know what? I'm tired of all of you guys. I am tired. I'm sick and tired of you sinning. Why should I give up my life for you? Why should I go through this perfect plan right here? You know, you're just going to gonna lie to me again. You say, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it again. You're going to break my trust. And you're, you're going you're gonna to sin again. You're no good. I, I don't know about you, but I, I can't ever imagine Jesus being like that. But that's how we act sometimes. That doesn't sound like Jesus. That sounds like us. Every one of us has talked like that. We've thought like that. And we've done things like that. We wish bad upon people. But no more. After tonight, let's give it all to Jesus. Let's tell the world that there is a love that never ends. Romans chapter, verse, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing is ever going to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. So whatever lie that Satan tries to come up with, and tries to persuade you, or tries to get in your, in your ear, and try to make doubt rise up in your heart, you just remind him who your God is. You just remind him who your God is, and what your God did. He died on the cross. He paid my sin debt. So I don't ever have to worry about going to hell. I have a home in heaven forever and ever and ever. You remind him every time he does that. I'm God's. He loved me. I will never not stop being his. And I hope tonight, after hearing this, this makes you, more, this want, this makes you want to be more like Jesus, the same as me. And no matter what doubt you, that you try to come up, or if you ever think that his love will ever come to an end, I promise you, it will never. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And truth be told, if we're honest, you know, truth is, we're not worthy of his love. We're not worthy of his love. But that's why we call it amazing grace. And because of this, it makes me want to be like Jesus and tell others how they can do the same. Let's have every head bowed and every eyes closed. With every head bowed, every eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight and you want to be more like Jesus. Maybe you want to care for others. Maybe you want to surrender like Jesus. Maybe you want to love like Jesus. If, that, if that's you tonight, when they begin this invitation, I want you to come, leave your pews, and come up to this old-fashioned altar and tell God that you're going to, you want to be more like him. But if we go back to the first three things that I said, the first thing that I said before we even get started, the first thing that has to happen before you try to be like Jesus is that you must be saved. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's never been a time or a place where you said a prayer from your heart to God's ear to save you. Right here where you're sitting, you can be saved tonight. It's not Esther that's saving you. It's not the prayer that's saving you. It's God of heaven reaching down from heaven and pulling you out of that murky clay, Lord, and just wants to save you from all your sins. For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is knocking on your heart right now. He wants you to come in. He wants to come in. He wants you to allow him to come in. So if you want to be saved tonight and you want to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life, all you have to do is say a prayer from your heart to God's ear. All you have to do is say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. Please come into my heart and save me. I believe you was buried died on a cross where my sin was buried and three days later you rose from the grave. Thank you for saving me. As best as I know how please turn me from my sin to the Savior and help me to live for you 
the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed, absolutely no one looking around, I just want to rejoice and pray for you here in a moment. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you at all. I just want to pray for you in a minute. If anybody here tonight said that prayer for the first time and they meant it with their whole heart, would you just slip your hand up? Anybody that way tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you know somebody who's lost. Maybe you know somebody who's lost and you want to see them saved. Let's come tonight and let's pray for them. Let's have everybody stand to their feet. The altar is now open.